Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to run you through Clamshell because we've only done it once and we did it in a live stream. So Peter's going to show you that. It's one of my favourite lightings. So I think it's one of Peter's favourite lightings as well. Um, and so he'll just show you how he sets that up and disclaimer, there is no set measurements. So I'm going to get that out of the way first. Please don't comment asking what are the measurements, how the distance between them, the distance from the back of the wall. It's Peter will show you why that doesn't matter. I can matter. get a tape measure out. <laughs> I've already done that. <laughs> Peter will show you that it's not about the measurements and he will show you how he does set this up and, and we've got the amazing Anna back in as well. So I'm just going to do my clamshell type of look. With this, I first did this nearly oh, 16 years ago, I think I worked it out. I can use all different top types of light, top and bottom. I've decided to go back and use the very, very first light I ever used. So I've just got a strip light at the bottom, big octa on top. At the moment, the octa's turned off, not turned on at all. Um, and I'm just going to start by lighting with the bottom light. And what I'm trying to do is get an exposure on her throat, just in here. I'm going to try and make in under the neck the brightest part and it's going to make it look really, really ugly. But then we're going to bring this light in to even out. So in the end, we end up getting two lights working as one and that's it's like clamshell. That's, you can use all different types of light for clamshells. Um, I've just got my 100 mil on. I'm at a 100 ISO, 160th of a second at f8. And I'm just going to take a shot, cool. And up it comes exactly like I'm expecting. Let's get my overexposure warning turned on. So this is dead flat at the moment, having color corrected or anything. I should really, I might just quickly throw a color card on there. Only because it gets me closer to my corrected, right in front of your face, right close to your face. Ta. Thank you. It just gets me within the colour area, right, so I don't have to do this later. I just colour correct this now. It just gets me closer. There we go, because I thought there was a lot of yellow in that. So I'm just going to turn up this pack. Now, there's no rule. The amount of people ask me, what power do you put here? What power do you put here? It, if I got a light meter and clicked it up and clicked it down, I could give you a sort of a ratio, but I don't even do it that way. I'm lighting by look. I'm not lighting by numbers. And I'm just going to keep pushing. In fact, that's nearly perfect. See, like I said, I want to get it to look the brightest part I want to have on her throat. I think I've still got a bit of room. No, see, that's exactly. I'm a third of a stop till it goes off. So I've pretty much got that exactly where I want it. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because, see, look what's done with the collarbone and everything. So that's one of the reasons I like doing this type of look. So now that I've got this one right, I leave this turned on and now I'm going to turn the octa on from above. And the, even though this doesn't work in numbers, the bottom one's at 4.2, the top one's at 3.6. But this is an efficient light, being so small, it'll push out more light. This takes a lot more power to get that same volume of, or same f-stop of light out. And I'm just going to slowly fill in. So you can already see the difference from the first, see how it's already starting to fill. The only thing I'll ask you, Anna, if you can just keep the same pose the whole time. So just leave your hands just hanging the whole time, only so it's easier to compare the shots. So I'm gonna jump up a bit, let's jump up 4-2, so it's 4-2 on both. And I'm gonna kind of keep lighting, you'll see the big difference this is making. So basically what I'm trying to do is the top light's gonna to fix all the problems the bottom light created, but still leave an interest in her collarbone in that area. So I've gone up by half a stop. And I'm just gonna keep going till I expect that just above the tip of her nose or her just on her forehead will be the first area to go off. So I'll go up for another half stop. Cool. In fact, I can do it up here. Oh, right. So it didn't go off where I expected. Oh, it's gone off tip on the nose. But now what's happened is the top light, compared with the bottom light, is now overlighting her throat. 
So this is getting close to where I want it. So I'm going to actually turn the bottom light down three tenths because there was more light under her chin than above. Now it's just going off. See, if I zoom in on this, you'll see it's going off just on the underside of both. So it's still saying that the bottom light is still giving me the problem more than the top light. So take off another third of a stop. Yeah, that's starting to look cool. All right, so now that I've got this, and you'll see that the big difference from before we added any of the, bottom, the top light, we've gone from there to there, which is evening it out. Now I'm gonna start fine tuning it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, Anna, do you wanna take that far backwards? Yeah, it's a fraction, just a tiny bit forward, just a little bit there, perfect. Cool, it's really pretty. All right, so as I say to a lot of people, why did I do this? And my answer is to see if I like the lighting better or worse. And I like it better. We've lost some power, but if I bring up my power, I'm still liking that better than that. I'm finding the lights a nicer angle on her. Definitely liking that better. So back a little bit's fine now. Now I've got to decide. I'm gonna drop, oops, I'm gonna drop this down a little bit, which is gonna turn up the power. But hopefully, again, this is gonna be a better or worse. So what I've done here is just to see if this change has made the lighting better or worse. Definitely better. Definitely, and this is how I light. When I'm fine tuning a light, I don't care about numbers, I don't care about light, any of that stuff is not the photo. It'll only tell you numbers, but it won't tell you it's gonna look good. So from about three or four minutes ago, everything I do from now on is about, am I making this picture feel better or feel worse? That's all I'm doing with every single picture from now on is to fine tune. Thinking I'm liking the first one better. Hmm. That's novel. So the difference is I just moved this light a little bit to center it a bit better. I think it's nicer off center. Yeah, definitely, definitely like that better off center. I'm pretty happy with the picture. I'm just, I don't want to go to a black hole behind her though. So what I want to do, and I've preempted that this might've been the case. So I've already got a light sitting there ready, just in case this was too black. Even though we've got a lot of power going off here, all the power is going up or down. It's falling off very quick and that's, there's nothing of it's hitting the wall. Now, if I didn't have a third light, I could move this whole thing back closer to the wall, but I've got a third light, so. All right, so I've just dialed in the pro photo behind and you'll see instantly now we've got some depth into this wall. I'm just gonna fine tune this a little bit. So I want that light to fall off maybe bit quicker but hopefully it's not going to be too bright. I try not to get too much of a portraiture type of look. I want to get the light to fall a little bit off center to her and we are a little bit brighter on this side than this side but I might just force that a bit more. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I'm liking how this is now not directly behind. I think I could even push it further. Let's drop it a touch more. Yeah, I'm wanting the power of the light sitting down more on her shoulder. I think that's all right. Got a bit of room to drop it. It's getting close. Yes, yeah, so I can spend a lot of time just on 
the back light, but for only taking one hero shot, it's sort of like, no, I think I like that. All right, so Anna's in the right spot. Everything else is right. So now that I've got my lighting that I'm happy with, I'm now gonna crop my camera slightly better. And so I'm just gonna crop this a little bit tighter. Cool, that's really pretty. Get my exposure. Nice, pretty. All right, so straight out of camera, this is nice. So first thing, if I go for say color shot, what I'd most likely do to this, if I throw some contrast into this picture, it's gonna make her skin go orangier, especially up around there. So in the shadow areas, but it's putting this beautiful punch into that shot. And by me coming into my color area, I can just desat the whole picture. So we're up 22, let's desat by 22. And we'll get this nice sort of, this really nice sort of um, porcelain type of look. Now if I jump in here and give this, all I've done is lock down my highlights and my shadows, and I'm gonna give the middle a pre, no, it's gonna be better. Just a little bit of a pre-punch. It's a bit nice. Anna's making noises, so she must like it. I actually wanna crop this tighter. So now that I've done this, I'm just gonna play cool. Now I've got that. Um, I'm gonna go, definitely go in tighter. So I don't think I need all of that torso. This might've been why I had the longer lens on. It's really pretty, beautiful. That's very pretty, Anna. You love it? Mm -hmm. All right, what can I do to make it better? Yeah, I'm just, you know me. If you can make it better, make it better. All right, let's, what I'll do, we'll get a few shots of this. So really it's about, and the only thing is, I'm feeling, yeah, I'm a little bit low on your eyes. So I wanna be a little bit more eye to eye with you. I want that, more that beautiful strength. That's really cool, that's really cool. That's really pretty. Just breathe out. Nice. So one of the little tricks, if I wanna get this really relaxed look, yeah, that's really nice. Sometimes it, just to breathe out and shoot them at the end of the breath, just has a more relaxed in the face. And see how she, she's a little bit tight in the jaw here, and that breathe out, see how it just relaxes down? Those eyes are really, really pretty. So again, they're just, as it, and then when you get to the bottom, just let that feeling, cool, stunning, stunning. That's beautiful, that's really beautiful. So when I'm doing this, it's nearly like micro. So where I normally want the models to go crazy, I want them now to go crazy inside their head, but not move much outside. So do all their posing with their thoughts in their head. It's really pretty. I'll do three or four more shots of this. So now, and then I want to do a couple of black and whites. Cool, that's really pretty. Stunning, stunning, beautiful. A little bit stronger, lengthen your body, tall. That's it, and that, that's it, cool. Drop your chin and laser eyes. Cool, beautiful, beautiful. Now soften it back down. That's really pretty, that's really pretty. Cool. All right, so I'm certain I got a nice color shot in this. Yeah, it's really pretty. I'm just gonna now do a black and white version. And I know it's strange, weird, I can just change this to black and white, but quite often when I'm shooting for black and white, I'm after a certain look. And once I can see the screens showing you the black and white, I can then fine tune the look to what the screen's showing me. Let's go the opposite to that. I might completely stuff this up, but. Let's get that nice down. I'll take take that off her. Uh, I'll put get a glow in the clarity. That's nice. And I want to get all that detail back in that hair. Oops. Yeah, cool. So I'm after a little bit more of a, a nasty, like a little bit darker, mysterious type of feel with this. So I'm just gonna push everything to break. And put a little bit there. Cool. 
So a lot of what I'm doing is really one of the things, that, this is my look that I'm getting with my lad, the way I work it. All right, so I'm gonna do one other little change. I am gonna go for a longer lens with this because I'm gonna, I wanna chop in tighter. Let me just, that's cool. I've changed to 150 mil, which is gonna be equivalent to maybe a 135 on, I'm just gonna see what happens if I take the top of her head off. Cool. So I wanna have a, a more intense feel and I find by getting, definitely like getting tighter, I'm just deciding do I want top of head or not. Cool, I'm just gonna do one with and one without. Cool. Cool. That was cropped off there. Yeah, maybe too intense. Right, let's see what I get there. Cool, pretty, pretty. That's really pretty. Yeah, so this is stronger. So come out onto your toes. Get that, yeah, get that strength. Yeah, you can come up just there. Cool, cool, beautiful, beautiful. Nice, nice. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Real cool. Is it cool, Anna? So this just will come just down to your taste. Um, they're two completely different shots. This is more a little bit nastier, harsher. And then we come into a little bit prettier, softer. Let's admit her hair does look really nice with the orange and the bluish background. And that can most likely push that color misbalance a bit too. So we hope you enjoyed that, showing you how you can get two completely different looks with the same light. And I will throw up another editorial with Anna, and I could also leave a link to that live stream that we did with Lucas Michelle. Maybe I'll do that.